Well, good evening, everybody. It is Friday night. It's 630, and it is your time to join me on this journey. I am Florence Donald, and I welcome you to the Purposeful Productivity Show. And tonight, we're wrapping up Artificial Intelligence Month. I'm so excited. This has been fun. It's been educational. I've learned a lot along the way, and I'm practicing more and more skills. So I hope you come along tonight. And we're going to talk about something really fundamental to the way we operate in our productivity system. I would submit it's probably the more foundational than even your calendar, which is kind of hard to believe, but it is. We're going to talk about how can AI automate your personal knowledge management and save you hours of time. Now, you may say, like, why? Why would I say it's more fundamental than managing your calendar? And I say that because we constantly, all day, every day, are taking notes, taking in information. All of that knowledge, we're putting it on sticky notes and notepads and everywhere else, and then we've got to collect it together. Some of it ends up on our calendar. Some of it ends up in our task manager. Some of it ends up in a database, but at the end of the day, it's a bunch of information that we've collected. So tonight, we're going to talk about how artificial intelligence and a few tools I'm going to talk about, just a few, can help you in that effort. And we're going to get right into it right after we see who's out here in the building with us today. And I'm going to do this, and I don't want that to be on the screen, so I'm going to get it off the screen. If I can figure out how to do that. Go, go away. It's not moving. So we're going to do it that way. So we have with us this evening none other than the amazing Frank Jackson. Thank you for being in the building with us tonight. And I'm so happy to have you here. And we also have currently um, the emotional CEO who's always reminding me to acknowledge the Live Tribe. Yes, happy Friday Live Tribe. Some of you may not be in the chat. You're in the building. You're listening anyway because you're cooking dinner or taking care of children or maybe you're even driving home at this time. But welcome and welcome to the Live Tribe. And for those who aren't with us live today, so because that happens, our replay crew, welcome and we're so glad to have you here with us. I'm glad to have you here with me because you're important. You're important to me as a person. You're important to the information that I'm sharing. And what I'm sharing is really for you and your benefit, not for me. So that's why you're important because I want to bring you value. So Let's get right into it by talking about what PKM is, personal knowledge management. Before I talk about tools and using artificial intelligence, I want to talk about what this is a little bit more. And it's real simple. It's a process. It's how we collect, organize, and store information. But why is that important? Collecting, I said earlier, is because we're thinking thoughts and information is coming to us all day, every day. We're thinking about ideas and what people ask us to do and that text message that came in and the meeting notes that I took and the Zoom meeting that I was in and the phone call that I was on and just the stuff that came in email. Information unstructured. What we, it's not in a specific database. It's unstructured. It's coming at us all the time. So our knowledge management system, our personal knowledge management system, is how we collect all that information together. And then once we've gotten it, how do we organize it? It does not self-organize. And that's one of the things that gets us in trouble because we don't take the time many times to actually organize all this information. We know we've got it in email and we've got it in a sticky pad somewhere and we've got it in a notebook somewhere and we've got it in a Google Doc somewhere, but it's not actually organized and labeled and named so that it's there for easy retrieval for us. And then 
We also don't have a consistent place where we store the information. Back to what I just said, all the places that I just ticked off that all this information is in. Many of us, myself included, think email is where we should store all that information. It isn't. It is not. Email is a message delivery mechanism. It is not a database for storing information, although many people use it that way. But it's not the most efficient way to store a whole bunch of information. I'm going to ask you a question. Have you said to yourself, let me send myself an email so I don't forget that? I have. I send myself emails. So if you do, that's more information that you need to collect, organize, and know where you're storing it. As we go through today, if you have a question, please put a Q colon in front of it. And if you're in the replay crew, put a question in the comments and I'll be sure to get back to you with an answer. Quite frankly, those questions are things that I want to use to make videos and give you not only you, the individual who's asking the question, the answer, but the entire community answers to those very valuable questions. So looking forward to that. So now that we know that uh, what PKM is, is collecting, organizing, and storing unstructured information. It's the process that we go through. It doesn't all happen at one time. It happens in stages, in steps. That's what we do it. But why do we do that? It's easy retrieval. That note that you took, that idea that you had, that action item that someone gave you, that recipe that someone gave you, the color scheme that someone gave you, the great idea someone gave you. How do you get it back quickly and easily? That's the retrieval. Getting it back is retrieving it. Being able to find it later is retrieval. Sharing it with other people. We don't live on, we don't live on planet by ourselves. We live with other people. And most of us work with other people. Even those of us who are quote unquote retired, we have family and friends and people who are volunteering with. So we're working with other people and we need to share information with them. Using systems, using your PKM to organize and store information will help you to be able to share information with those other people far more easily than what we sometimes have done in the past. The last piece is it expands our learning. Being able to go back and retrieve that information and make connections, right? Connect the dots in the information. It grows us. It expands us and grows our knowledge. And it allows us to sometimes take that one letter, that one word, that one sentence and expand it into a much bigger effort or product or post. I'll give you an example. When I started the newsletter, it literally started with two words in a note. I had the inspiration, and the inspiration actually ended up turning into the name of the newsletter. But over time, I collected ideas about what this new newsletter would be, how I would use it, what kind of information I wanted to share with the community, how I wanted to engage the community. All of that was expansion from two words and me collecting them and being able to get back to them quickly and know where they were. That is a simple example, but that's a real example of how I used very unstructured information, an idea that came to me, an inspiration that came to me. If you're getting value, let me know. Hit the thumbs up button. Put a like in the comments. Do something. Let me know that you're getting value even this early in tonight's live stream. So now, now we know what PKM is. What are some of the tools? Tonight's going to be real simple. I'm not doing anything complicated because you know how to take notes. You've been doing it most of your adult life and even before, like from the first grade, if not before. So what happens now? I'm going to talk about three software products and really kind of expand out how they save you time and how you can use them. The first one I'm talking about is AI Note Taker. You may not have heard of it. It's AI Note Taker is the actual name of the software. 
but where it is, it is in Zoom. Yes, so many of us are in Zoom meetings every day, and we're trying to take notes on post-its and notebooks and typing and doing all that. It's time-consuming, and we don't get to focus on the conversation that we're having as much because we're trying to take notes. AI Note Taker is a transcriber. You can use it, attach it to a Zoom meeting. You have to be on a Zoom paid account to use this so it doesn't come with the free version. But if you're on a paid account, a corporate account, a personal paid account, whatever kind of Zoom account you have that's a paid one, you can use it. You just click and it will capture and transcribe information and conversation that's happening in that Zoom meeting. It gives you instant, this is the time-saving piece, instant access to highlighted important moments in your meeting. If you want to level up what comes out of these types of meetings, AI Note Taker is a great tool. You just go into Zoom, you get the software, you attach it to your Zoom account, and you start learning how to use it. That's saving you time. It's helping you to be able to organize your notes later. I'm going to tell you where to put them after you've gotten them with a couple of the next applications. And you're not having to retype notes, figure out what you meant when you hand wrote it, or retype it from a recording, or watch a video over again and try to grab those notes. That saves you time. It saves you many, many hours in your note-taking journey. So AI note taker is a big one, especially if you use Zoom. If you like that one, let me know. Put a thumbs up, put a yes, I like it, put something in, in the chat so I know that you're liking what you're hearing. The next one I'm gonna talk about is MIM. This one is a all in one note taking workspace. On my channel, I frequently talked about the fact that I use Evernote. I'm starting to look at other tools again, and MIM is one that I'm kind of leaning toward one to spend some more time with. I've spent a little time with it. I like it. I like the way, I, th these are the things I like about it. It does one of the things that Evernote does for me. It gives me my own personal Google. It's not public domain. It's my information that I have curated and pulled together. It's my notes. It's images. It's audio. It's, all, it's email. It's, it's text messages. All that disparate information. It's a picture. I take a picture of, of something and put it in there. I can put it all in MIM, which is very similar to the way I have used Evernote. I can web clip information if I'm doing research and organize it in MIM into a cohesive organization system where I can find the information again. So that's one of the ways I like it. But here's where MIM saves you time. You're putting all the information together, but because it has very strong search in it, it becomes your personal Google because it's indexing all the information that you're putting in this tool. It's, again, similar to Evernote, I'm gonna say it because I've been a long time, and I'm, th none of these I'm not sponsored, They're not. I have no affiliate links for them, they're just simply products that I'm using. So MIM is a great artificial generative artificial intelligence application if you're looking for something to use and you're not trying to build a complicated system. You just want something straightforward. You want to be able to put all those notes in one place. You want to be able to take those notes that AI note taker transcribed for you and then put them in one place so you can get back to them. MIM is a really good tool to consider or software product to consider. And they spend a lot of time on privacy and data encryption. So that's a big one, your privacy and encrypting your data so that it stays private, right? It's your own personal 
Google. It's not going out to chat GPT. Nothing wrong with chat GPT. Many of us use it. I use it. But that's public domain. Whatever you put in chat GPT, it's going to stay in the public domain forever. It just, everybody can get access to it. So there you go. Keep that private. The last one I'm going to talk about is Notion AI. Now, Notion is similar in that it is an all-in-one workspace. But Notion has some database features in it. So there's a little bit, as you get into using Notion, a little bit more structured data formatting. You can put it in, in databases. And I did not know this was on the screen still. Um, and and um, put it in database format and link databases together. But Notion has released their AI features, which are additional features. So what are some of the things you can do with the Notion features? Well, you can do things like summarizing text. So if you've got a bunch of text, you can have Notion. This is not in a meeting, but you just got some information and you want to summarize it. You can use Notion AI to give you a summary of that content, that data, that text that you've gotten written. It can analyze meeting notes and generate some ideas of next steps to take. So the, that's one of the features of the Notion AI product. You can write in different languages and translate in different languages. Now, Google has had the ability to translate from one language to another for a long time. If you're using a Notion, however, you're not having to leave Notion, go to, go to Google, do the translation, copy and paste the translation, and put it back into Notion. Again, it's a time saver because you don't have that extra step or additional step that you're having to take. Those are some of the benefits. All of these are easy to use. They save you time. They have a free version to them. So if you want to get started and learn how to use them, you're not having to commit financially before you know if it's something that you really are going to use or not. You're able to get started with it, test it, and try it. Get some assistance if you need it. I'm available. And in fact, if you want to connect with me, you can always go to florencedonald.live and connect with me. You can schedule an appointment on my calendar. You can um, see what I'm about. You can also get join my newsletter there. You can I'm also, if you're on the replay crew, you're listening and you're not on your computer or where you can subscribe right now, subscribe to the channel. Get the information that we're putting out, and then we will continue to grow together. I am uh, really at the end of tonight. It's three simple tools. AI Note Taker, if you're in Zoom meetings and you want to capture that data. MIM, if you're looking for all-in-one workspace to put your notes in a bunch of different formats, audio, video, text, images, that sort of thing, web clippings, and Notion if you, especially if you already use Notion, and if you need a little bit more of a structured, like a database type of environment, Notion is an awesome tool to use. All of these center around one simple thing, and that's the ability to take notes and be effective at it, be able to collect those notes, later go back and organize those notes, and for the purpose of being able to retrieve them, to get them back, does you no good to have thousands of notes and you can't find no information? So we got some folks in the building with us here tonight. So I want to say hello to them. And I'm going to say hello, first of all, to my mentor here, Mr. Walter Strong from NBA Sports Talk. It's in the building. Fantastic. Glad to have you here, sir. So glad to have you. I always look forward to what your feedback is to me. And then, of course, I want to say hey to Dagan. Glad to have you in the building, Dagan. Hopefully you're getting some value out of this. And just, you know, if you have a question, drop a cue code in front of it and ask 
your question because I love answering your question. So glad to have you all in the building with us this evening. So I'm going to wrap up and just give you, you know, I like to give you homework. But before I do, remember what your productivity win of the week is. Um, get that ready while we're going through the, the wrap up and I'm having trouble managing the screen today. Um, get your win of the weekend, your productivity win of the week. Have you used something with artificial intelligence? Did you try one of the tools that we've recommended? Have you thought about how to change what you're doing or something to tweak in your existing environment that you can use? If you have, that's a win. Share it with us. Want to get your win of the week. So here's what we're going to do. I like to give you things to do so that when you walk out of here or you leave this video, or you leave this live stream, there are some concrete steps that you can take. One is as you're taking notes, whatever tool you're using, consistently categorize them together. Figure out what the big buckets are, the big themes are, that you use categorize your notes in a way that you that makes sense to you i've recently i years ago i used a very simple digital categorization system and i'm kind of playing with especially looking at mem going back to it and it was when i learned the gtt system read the book started studying it and that is um making my folders just A to Z or A to Z, making a set of folders A to Z, kind of back to the days when we would file papers and file folders in a filing cabinet. You used the A to Z format. So if it started with a K, you just put it in K. If it started with an L, you put it in L. If it started with an O, you put it in O. I've been really looking at going back to that simple organization system because it is very effective. But however you categorize, whether you use pair of uh, project, area focus, resources, and archive, if you use some other format, ABC, one, two, three, whatever categories you use, consistently categorize all of your notes. Not some of them, all of them. The second one is regularly review and update your notes. Now, this means reviewing you're going to find notes that you no longer need. You want to get rid of them. Purge them out of your system. You'll find notes that you need to retitle. Retitle them. You'll find notes that you want to categorize differently than the way you've got them categorized. Categorize them. But curate that information so that when you do need it, you can get to it quickly. The last one is if you're deciding to use something like Notion or MIM, use the search capability within those software products to find your notes. Learn to use search instead of relying on remembering where the information is. Search is something that I've embraced over the last three to four years much more heavily than I've ever done in the past. I've been using computers a long time, so I came out of the folder method, and so that's how I would always do things. I still file in categories and folders, but I really use search and keyword search to find what I want. These artificial intelligence tools indexes your information, so search is much more accurate than it has ever been in the past, and that saves you time as well. So we've got some wins here, and we want to share them. The first one, uh, InBase Sports Talk says, his, woo, I need to change that. Let's go to a different screen because that's hard to read. NBA Sports says, his win of the week is you learn to edit YouTube trailer in Canva. Woo-hoo, woo, that's good. I'm still a baby Canva user. I'm, I'm, I'm getting there, though. I'm going to get better. I'm going to get better. I'm going to keep trying. So that is uh, that one. And then Dagan says, BBG, BGG Grooming says, got four subscribers from the last short you posted. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Those are definite wins. 
to celebrate. We want to celebrate with you and celebrate for you. So awesome, Dagan. Glad that you had that experience. Well, we are really truly at the end of tonight. Did not go long, but I wanted to make sure that we shared this information with you. Well, hello, we have someone else in the building with us. Hello, Anne Marie Walker. Glad to have you. If you have a win of the week, not too late to get it in, slide it in, and we'll celebrate with you. Um, I just want to do this, remind you of these three software tools. One is AI Note Taker. It connects to Zoom and takes your meeting notes right in Zoom. MEM, it's your great all-in-one note-taking space. And if you're a Notion user or you're con contemplating Notion, consider using Notion AI, which is an addition to regular Notion, but it is super powerful, especially if you're a Notion user already. And with that, we are really, really at the end of tonight. I don't have anything else i'm glad to have you guys with me and i'm going to try to do this correctly i'm going to say good night have a great weekend use some of these tools to your advantage and save yourself hours of time retrieving your own information good night everybody <music>